tax the super rich more, article tells federal government as part of ways out of recession. And Governor Day Umayi of Bebonyu State says the five years of APC administration is better than that of the 16 years of the PDP. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladendi. Welcome back, and this is Plus Politics. It is no longer news that Nigeria has officially entered its second recession in five years. According to Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, the nation recorded a contraction of 3.62% in the third quarter of 2020. It said this is the second consecutive quarterly GDP decline since the recession of 2016. The last time Nigeria recorded such cumulative GDP was in 1987, when GDP declined by 10.8%. In response to this, former Vice President Abubakar Tiku has blamed the recession on the federal government, saying it could have been averted if the Buhari's administration had listened to his advice. Joining us to discuss this, we have Dr. Hamed Adamu, a senior lecturer at Nile University of Nigeria, Abuja, and he's also a petroleum economist. Good evening, Dr. Adamu. Uh, good evening. Thank you for having me. And we also have Mr. Ni Akinshiju, who is the chairman of Buhari Media Organization, BMO. Good evening, Mr. Akinshiju. Thank you so much for having me. Very good evening. Yeah. Okay, by law of first mention, I hope I will have to change these laws one of these days. Let me start with Dr. Ahmed Adamo. Um, a lot of people will want to probably disagree with uh, Atiku Abubakar, knowing the idea behind the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, coupled with uh, maybe the answers too, uh, looking at the one term destruction of property. So, a lot of economies had foreseen this coming. So why are we, is it time to throw blame at the federal government? Yes, of course, uh, because um, we should be able to predict what is likely to happen to our economy and take measures to avoid what is likely to come upon us. We have learned lessons from the previ previous recession we had under this administration. Um, our economy has never suffered this uh, severely to this extent until the, this administration, during this administration, the, the APC administration, and like you outrightly mentioned, we slipped into two recessions within just uh, five years. This is not just an uh, accident. It's not an accidental thing. It's an indication of the failure of the physical uh, policy makers in the country, especially the, the government, the politicians. Uh, they failed to actually secure the economy. And even though we understand that the pandemic is a global thing and it has caused so many economies to actually collapse and had contraction, but actually in Nigerian situation, if you look at the current situation, just going beyond the numbers, going beyond the headlines, if you look around the country, if you look at the severity of the poverty, insecurity and psychological depression and the collapse of many small and medium enterprises, you realize that there is huge, huge failure from the physical policy makers. Okay. And if you look at... Dr. Adamu, Dr. Adamu, I, I'm sorry, I, I should have told you earlier on, uh, we're going to make some of this conversation quite uh, straight to the point so that we can explore the time that we have. Okay, let me have your opening statement, uh, Mr. Niya Kishiju. Um, I, I, um, is it time to look at uh, reappraise the the policy, the fiscal policy of the federal government? Looking at what uh, Abubakar Tiku did say. Well, I, I think the uh, last 
a bit of the story. I mean, it's interesting. Uh, what we are seeing is the first of the reaction to uh, the uh, the news in the discussion. Uh, well, uh, for every follower of the Nigerian economy and the global economy, there is uh, the inevitability of the discussion has been in the air uh, since February. Uh, uh, because even before we recovered the first case of, uh, of COVID-19 in the country, there have been indicators you know, of uh, the possibility of decline in economic activity, especially in countries like China and the countries in Europe and America. So for us, by the time we shut down, in other words, lockdown was coming in April, due to uh, the second public in, in May. It was apparent we were going to go into infection because when you lock down a economy, what it translates to is that there was no form of transaction. The basis, the basis of an economy is transaction. We are buyers buy from sellers. Sellers offer their products or services in exchange for value of money, you know, and other assets. Now, where you have a situation where you cannot report such forms of transaction, especially in the true labor economy form in the country, legal state and the social capital pension, we would expect that this would impact you know, the economy going forward. Don't also forget that the flights were not coming in or leaving the country during this period. You know? So any conscious economist or follower of an economy will know that this is inevitable. So by the time we saw the, the Figures for what GDP figures for paper two at six point zero. Okay. Zero. It was accepted. But again, from there, I I, I was on a number of television stations, and I said, because of this figure that we are seeing, I am confident that by the third quarter, twenty twenty. The figures, the thousands of that people will start declining, will start falling. Okay. You know? Because okay, Mr. Nia Kishiju, I think your point is well driven home, uh, and uh, we'll come back to that. But let's also look at uh, the context of what the former vice president, uh, you know, referred to. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, what does it mean by tax the super rich? Tax the super rich. That sounds like. Uh, to some people, that sounds like a campaign slogan. So what exactly is the way out? What we hear is spend your way out of recession. What about this issue of increasing the tax? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, first I, I, I would like to appreciate uh, Atiku Abaka's patriotism. I believe if it were some ordinary politicians, they wouldn't have bothered about Nigeria's problem and uh, his consistency in advising this administration is really commendable and that's what every Nigerian should be doing and I agree with him because this is a time when we need to cut spending especially from the side of the government and we need to also reduce tax on ordinary Nigerians and tax the super rich because these super rich have excess money and we can tax them is a way of helping the, the people that are ordinary and people that are suffering at this moment. And that's what every rich person should be willing to also support this argument. Because if you look at the, the number of the, the proportion of the income distribution in Nigeria, the inequality, the gap between the rich and the poor person is becoming wide and wider. Wow, I, I guess the network is pretty bad. 
Oh, Dr. Ahmed, I, I was, we will make every effort to reconnect with you. But let me go back to Ni Akishiju. Now, talking about tax, the super rig, that sounds very nice. And that sounds very, very good to a lot of uh, millions of Nigerians who believe that uh, this gap is getting wider. So why don't we make some money off the rich? Well, the truth of the matter is that uh, I, I find uh, a lively article of data a very strange <laughs> economy, if we describe itself as such. But because for every, for every situation and circumstance, there are different approaches you know, to envision an economic challenge. The economic challenge that we have at this point in time is the constraint to resources and application of resources you know, to the extent that you have obstruction between the purpose of demand and supply. So the, the idea then is to be contrarian. Therefore, you will have to spend as much as possible and encourage and the economic environment to be empowered and motivated enough to spend so, so as to drive production. You know, because the, the, the right education of our learners is accomplishment. And because of that, there is a need to encourage every segment of the economy, you know, to spend money. Now, when you are talking about testing the rich, what you are saying, therefore, is to say you are constraining spending of the rich at this point in time. This is wrong. Now, I can quickly also tell you. That since 2019, with the 2019 finance bill, the, uh, the federal government has deployed what you call progressive tax you know, uh, policy. Wherefore, companies with, uh, that will charge less than 25 million naira turnover in a year are exempted from paying taxes in Nigeria. Absolutely exempted. The nominal company income tax in Nigeria is 30%. That's the nominal, 30% of profit. But what the government has done is to exempt any company that, that uh, is returning a turnover of less than 25 million annually from paying any form of tax. The second category is, are those that have between 25 million dollars and 100 million dollars of turnover. Instead of paying the nominal 30% of their profit, that uh, treasury has reduced to 20%. So it's only companies, and these are very few companies. Companies uh, uh, that, uh, that, have, that have turnover between, I mean, from 100 million and above. Those are the people that are required, of those identities that are required to pay 30% uh, tax. So what I'm saying to essentially is that. The focus of this government from the one has been to encourage production. So we are small and medium sized enterprises make some bit of profit, they are encouraged to profit back, to reinvest into the into okay. the into the business. Okay. That is what uh, we'll, we'll come with some of those other strategies. I understand Dr. Ahmed is back. Uh, sorry, can you just continue from where you stopped, trying to justify what uh, Atiku Abubakar did say? Because from what we've heard from uh, many economists like you, is spend your way out. And uh, why talk about increasing the tax? Not even increasing the tax net now. Increase the tax of the super rich. Yes, I, I Yeah, I believe if you tax the rich, uh, this will enable the government to get some money and to invest back into the already depleting economy, a collapsing economy like this one. So this is strategy for the government. I think the government should appreciate what Atiku Abakar is saying, because instead of borrowing and borrowing again and again, we cannot put ourselves in this big trap. And this is going to be uh, a deprivation to the future growth. So what we can do now is to tax the rich. Because okay. The rich have enough that they can give a little more at this critical time. And this is the time of giving. This is the time of sacrifice. 
And there, there are two things here. And the government itself had to sacrifice, and then the rich also, they have to sacrifice because it makes no uh, sense and it's no longer safe even for the rich if the poor didn't have food to eat. So these poor people will come and attack the rich. So it's just like paying for your own security. So you're not losing out. If there is no security in this country, there is no business. There is no rich people. Your richness will not be of any use of you. People will chase you on the road and will stone you. So what you need to do now is to save the country because the country comes first. It's this country that made you who you are today. Without Nigeria, you don't have been where you are today. So we have to come back and save this country. This is the only country we have. And the okay. void of our Dr. political Man. division... Dr. Dr. Man, let me you. stay with you. Let me stay with you before I go back to New York, uh, Can we look at um, some of those other strategies being mentioned? Interestingly, you are a petroleum economist, and one of the easiest way out that we've heard the economists talk about is the issue of diversification. That as long as we remain a mono economy, remember one of the reasons why we went into recession the last time was because of the price of crude that fell. So if there is no pandemic and we have another sharp drop in crude, uh, how do we come out of this? I think this is another failure of this administration the failure to diversify. Uh, we talk about agriculture, agriculture. Is it about this administration or several administrations? Dr. Ahmed. We, we are not exporting much to support the, the economy. It's still the oil sector that is supporting the economy and the government refused to relieve itself from the overburden and inefficient petroleum sector. The government is still holding on on NAPC, is still holding on refineries that are not being operating, spending over 8 billion, 80 billion naira in, in just eight months to produce nothing. Petrol. And this is excessive wastages. And this administration has refused to even agree that they have failed in this perspective. Talk less of making the dress. And that's the biggest failure. If this administration could not diversify uh, the economy into a very sustainable sector, and then we continue to fall into recession and recession again after recession. And so what I want to say, this is a time to sacrifice. This is time to give. The government, what they need to do first is to tax its own self, reduce the spending in governance. Um, the, the Esther call, the money you pay for uh, flights, for hospital bills, education abroad, you have to cut it down on salaries, allowances, let us sacrifice. And if the government itself will now start to sacrifice, that's when the super rich will also follow suit and say, okay, it's time for us to also sacrifice and then come down to the middle class. Everyone should contribute and let us diversify the economy. You cannot ask people to go back to farm if you are not providing the mechanized farming facility and the relevant infrastructure and the security. Because how many people have abandoned their farms this year? Just because there is no security, because they, they know that if they go to their farms, they will be kidnapped. Okay. People are afraid to travel. People are afraid to invest. Why? Because of insecurity. Okay, and I'm coming back to you, Dr. Ahmed. I'll come back to you because there, there are some issues that I'm sure Ni Yakishiju will not agree with. Now, Ni Yakishiju, uh, he has mentioned what we are used to. And that's the fact that the failure of government to diversify. And if there have been diversification, probably is not, um, you know, very prominent. Let me hear your take on that. Yes. Can you come again? What do you think about the issue of diversification? Dr. Ahmed has just said that this government has not done well in the area of diversification. Okay, thank you very much. I think we need to connect a meeting for this one that is well. Of course, the information has been championed by, uh, by the PGP and its accolades, including uh, the former presidential committee. If they keep talking about Nigeria's food debt, and I, there is a need for us to continue to, to collect this. After 2015, when this president, the current president was this warning, the death profile of Nigeria, and that is at the federal level, and not including state level. And, uh, the federal government death profile, foreign debt 
was $10 billion. Domestic debt was at a equivalent of $34 billion. When you had it together, it comes to $54 billion. Now, the debt that has been secured by this government between 2016 and 2019 is stated at $17 billion. And now what I keep saying is that both the $54 billion that was secured by the PPP and the other and this government where it was not utilized for anything, we cannot do it for anything. Now we see what we see that 70 billion is producing so much for us. That's for, that's for debt. I also want to correct the idea of this recession. I know for certain that second quarter 2014, Nigeria's GDP figure was 6.53. Thankfully, you have uh, an economy, a petroleum economy, as the best on the other side. Second quarter, 2014, Nigeria's GDP was 6.53. By second quarter, 2015, the figure had declined consecutively for four consecutive uh, quarters to 2.35. Now, what is, the, what is the basic definition of a, of a recession? Three consecutive quarters of decline. That's the basic definition. So I am saying that we had actually gone into a recession, you know, between second quarter 2014 and second quarter 2015. Okay. Probably, sorry, at least everyone will do. By the time... The president, President Biden, was spending his first full quarter, which was the third quarter of 2015. The economy under him rebounded from 2.25% 2, 2 GDP to 2.83% GDP. It was the president who actually saved you know, the, the economy from continuous recession onto the bombing of petroleum products and food oil pipeline. Okay, Nee, ni, I'm so sorry. Time is spent, and I just have uh, 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 just uh, two minutes to round off this session. So I'll come back to you to clean up um, this. I mean, to round off your opinion on this. And quickly, Doctor Ahmed. Now, the last recession was caused by sharp drop in the crude globally. This current one, the major cause is the pandemic which the world also agreed that the world is going into recession. This is not peculiar to Nigeria. So we are, as a country, how do we raise our buffers to, to mitigate this kind of occurrence again? Please, you have about 45 seconds. Yeah, yeah, we have to go back to the basics of economics. One is we have to follow what Atiku Abaka said, let us tax the rich get money and invest and spend. What, what government should do is now physical spending. One of, if you look at the books, if you are in recession, what you need to do is to spend money. But if you didn't have the money, how do you spend? When you spend, that is when you increase aggregate demand because uh, recession is when aggregate demand keeps falling over and over again. So the easiest way to uplift spending and aggregate demand is to get money and spend. On people, and I think the easiest way is to save money by saving the cost of governance and taxing the super rich. I raise my chest. Thank you so much. Thank you for resting your case. I'll come back to say thank you again. So, Ni, how do you rest your case on this issue? All the, right, the way you out. When you tax the rich, for what purpose are you taxing them for? If you not to generate revenue, already. The new expectations are already taken care of in the 2020 budget being discussed at the, at the uh, parliament. Now, the problem is if you tax the rich, you are constraining productivity. Okay, you tax someone who would normally, who would never, normally buy a business class ticket. You know, the, what you have done is to discourage that person from buying that business class ticket. Meanwhile, the hairline 
that is constrained from the person needs such person to patronize it so that it can sustain the business from the patronage of that each man. So at this point in time, we need the rich to be to keep the business moving. Extravagant as possible. Okay. So that they can sustain business and improve it by the impact of the coronavirus and the pandemic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nia Kishiju, Chairman, Buhari Media Organization, the BMO. Thank you for your time. And once again, thank you, Dr. Hamed Adamu, for your own position on this issue. Let's hope that uh, if we put your thoughts together, we should be out of recession. And federal government has also promised that uh, come first quarter in 2021, we'll be out of recession. Thank you, gentlemen, once again. Thank you so much. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, Governor Dave Umayi says 16 years of PDP is not worth being compared with that of APC. We'll be right back after the short break. <laughs>